Welcome back to Amitech Brookfield University and welcome to all our first time viewers. In this module, we'll gain an understanding of an instrument's full scale range and its impact on selecting the proper spring, spindle, and speed for your application. We will also discuss viscometer accuracy, how to perform a calibration check, and care. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Mark Koholan from Amitech Brookfield. As we continue, we will address the importance of knowing how to calculate the full scale range, or FSR, of an instrument based on the 3S rule, spindle, speed, and spring range. First, let's review what we refer to as full scale range. Let's take a bathroom scale as an example. Perhaps the bathroom scale has a maximum weight capacity of 300 pounds. We would call that the full scale range. Our instruments are accurate from 10% of the full scale range to 100% of the full scale range. So someone weighing 300 pounds would register at 100% of the full scale range, while someone weighing 150 pounds would register at 50% of the full scale range. Our instruments are accurate from 10% to 100% torque. So the minimum weight that can be measured accurately is 10% of the full scale range or 30 pounds. If the torque reading on the instrument is between 10% and 100%, the accuracy is plus or minus 1% of the full scale range. In this case, the displayed reading can have a tolerance of plus or minus three pounds. So how do we calculate the full scale range based on the spring, spindle, and speed? In this example, we see an RV spring, RV5 spindle, and a speed of 20 RPM. The full scale range is displayed in the gray information bar on the set speed window. It shows an FSR range of 20,000 CPS or 100% torque. Since we record readings between 10% and 100% torque, we know the operating range is 2,000 to 20,000 centipoise and accuracy is plus or minus 200 centipoise or 1% of the full scale range. Calculating the full scale range of an analog viscometer requires the use of the factor finder. Select the spring, spindle, and speed, and the factor finder will display a factor of 1% of the full scale range. Multiply this factor by 100 to determine the full scale range. On earlier models of our digital viscometers, simply pressing the auto range key would display the full scale range in centipoise based on the spindle and speed selected. In the current models, full scale range is displayed on the screen when either selecting the spindle or setting the speed. Full scale range is a function of the spring range, the spindle chosen, and the speeds used for the test. In this example, an RV range instrument is using an RV5 spindle. Speed varies from 1 to 100 RPM. As you can see, slower speeds result in a higher range than higher speeds. It then makes sense that the tolerance of the results at lower speeds is greater than the tolerance at the higher speeds. Increasing the speed by 100 from 1 to 100 then decreases the range by 100 as well. The tolerance is also reduced 100 fold at the higher speed. So what do we learn when we determine the full scale range? We know the maximum viscosity we can measure as well as the minimum viscosity we can measure. We also know the instrument accuracy. This is an example of the RV range spring with the RV5 spindle operating at 20 RPM. Full scale is 20,000 centipoise. The range is from 2,000 to 20,000 centipoise and the accuracy of the result is plus or minus 200 centipoise. We've seen how speed can change the operating range of an instrument. Let's see how the spring range affects the range of an instrument. Each instrument model offers several speeds as we have previously seen. The wider the range of speeds, the wider the viscosity range. But within each model, the spring range changes the viscosity range. The DV next rheometer has the greatest number of speeds. With an LV spring, the range goes from 15 centipoise to 6 million centipoise. When we use the RV range, 
the range has increased more than tenfold. The HA spring then doubles the RV range. Looking at the dial model range, going from the HA to HB increases the range by four times. This trend holds true for each model, so selecting the spring range of your preferred instrument is very important. You want to find the range that reflects your product's range. Building on your understanding of full-scale range and its impact on selecting the proper spring, spindle, and speed for your application, we'll now discuss viscometer accuracy, calibration check procedures, and instrument care. You can perform calibration checks to assure that your instrument is meeting the accuracy specification of plus or minus 1% of the full-scale range. When performing a calibration check with a known viscosity standard, you must consider both the instrument accuracy and the fluid accuracy. Amatec Brookfield states that when using standard spindles, the instrument accuracy is plus or minus 1% of the full-scale range in use. As we have learned, full-scale range, or FSR, is determined by the spindle, speed, and spring range of the instrument. You must also consider the accuracy of the viscosity standard as well. The fluid accuracy is also 1% of the actual fluid value as stated on the jar and certificate. To review, when a spindle and speed are selected using a given spring range instrument, the full scale range is then determined. The FSR is 100% torque and the maximum centipoise value that can be measured. We can measure down to 10% torque accurately. So the minimum viscosity that can be measured is 10% of the full scale viscosity value. Here, full scale range is 20,000 centipoise and 10% of that value is 2,000 centipoise. That is the operating range of the instrument in centipoise. Remember, the instrument accuracy is stated as 1% of the full scale range, or in this case, 200 centipoise. Therefore, any result will have an accuracy of plus or minus 200 centipoise. When performing a calibration check procedure with standard spindles, always use the guard leg and a container that has a minimum diameter and three and one quarter inches. A 600 ml low form beaker meets this requirement. Let's use an RV range instrument with an RV5 spindle at 20 RPM, for example. The full scale range is 20,000 centipoise. Accuracy then is 1% of this value or 200 centipoise. Note also that if using coaxial cylinder geometry, like the small sample adapter, thermocell or UL adapter, the accuracy becomes 2% rather than 1%. Now let's consider the fluid accuracy of 1%. The viscosity standard label states both the fluid item number, 5,000 centipoise, and the actual viscosity of 4,980 centipoise at 25 degrees centigrade. The lot number is also shown on the label. Since fluid accuracy is always 1% of the actual viscosity, in this example, the accuracy is plus or minus 49.8 centipoise. So we must consider the accuracy of both the instrument and the viscosity standard when determining the upper and lower viscosity range limits. Using the previous RV instrument with the RV5 spindle at 20 RPM, Full scale range with 20,000 centipoise. 1% of that value is 200 centipoise. In that case, the instrument is accurate to plus or minus 200 centipoise. Now, using the calibration fluid value of 4,980 centipoise, again, the fluid is accurate to 1% of its stated value or plus or minus 49.8 centipoise. We then combine the viscometer accuracy and the fluid accuracy and arrive at 249.8 centipoise. Using this combined accuracy value, we subtract the actual fluid value by this combined value to determine the lower acceptable viscosity limit of 4,730.2, and then add the combined accuracy value to the actual fluid value to determine the upper acceptable viscosity limit of 5,229.8.
as long as your results are between 4,730.2 centipoise and 5,229.8 centipoise, your instrument is in calibration. Amatec Brookfield recommends using one fluid measured at three speeds. The goal is to select speeds that cover the operating range of the sensing system. By testing at low, medium, and high torque, you are verifying the linearity and accuracy of the spring over its full range. When performing a calibration check, there is no need to use a standard that is in the same viscosity range as the material being tested. The calibration check is simply verifying that the sensing system is reporting the viscosity accurately. If the calibration check results are within the instrument's accuracy specification, you can be sure that all test results are reported accurately. When using standard LV spindles, we recommend using a 500 centipoise general purpose silicone. For the RV range, we recommend 5,000 centipoise general purpose silicone. For the HA and HB range, use 12,500 centipoise general purpose silicone. For example, a customer who typically tests material at 60,000 centipoise can perform a calibration check using a 500 centipoise for an LV range instrument or 5,000 centipoise for an RV range instrument. We recommend using the lowest viscosity standard for your instrument range, which will aid in cleaning up and decrease the time to reach thermal equilibrium. For a description of the calibration procedure, you can refer to your operating instructions manual or download the More Solutions to Sticky Problems guide from our website. Just remember, the calibration check must consider both the accuracy of the instrument and the accuracy of the viscosity standard being used. It's the sum of both values that determines the acceptable viscosity range for each speed. To simplify the calibration check procedure, you can download the calibration worksheet. It's a useful tool for determining the correct spindle, speeds, and fluid to use for the spring range of your instrument when performing the calibration check. Once the calibration check is performed and the results are entered into the calibration template, the calibration graph can be viewed. It displays the upper and lower viscosity limits, as well as the actual result. If the green line falls outside of the upper or lower range, then the instrument is out of calibration. If the results are high, the viscosity standard may not have been up to the stated temperature on the label. If the results fall low, the viscosity standards temperature may have been higher than what is stated on the label. Taking proper care of your instrument can prevent damage that might result in loss of accuracy and will assure that it is functioning properly. Care should be taken when attaching or removing spindles from the instrument. You should always lift the coupling nut and hold it up when attaching or removing spindles. This lifts the point away from the jewel and prevents any bearing damage. When there is a spindle attached to the instrument, avoid putting any lateral pressure on it. This could damage the suspension and bend the shaft. By using viscosity standards to perform calibration checks, you can be sure that the instrument is performing accurately. We recommend our annual service to replace the bearings and recertify the instrument. It is important to keep the spindle and instrument coupling free from sample. Contamination can lead to misalignment and sometimes prevent the removal of the spindle from the instrument. Be sure to store the spindles in their case to prevent any damage to them. Bent shafts and nicks or dents on the spindle surface can affect test results. There are several checks that can be performed daily that can identify suspension failure. When the instrument is first started, the result of the auto zero may indicate a suspension issue if the percent torque displayed after auto zero is greater or less than plus or minus 0.3% from 0%. If you have a DVE viscometer, you must set the speed to 10 RPM without a spindle attached and wait about one minute for the torque percent to stabilize. If you are within the minus 0.3 to plus 0.3% torque range, this is a sign that the suspension system is working properly. If the torque is outside of this range, it may indicate that there is some suspension damage. If that's the case, 
perform a calibration check to see if any service is needed. If the instrument fails the calibration check, it will need service. Again, when you perform a calibration check, you are verifying the accuracy of the measurement system. If you fail a calibration check, the instrument will need servicing. If the instrument passes the calibration check, it is in calibration and can be used. I hope this training module has helped you gain an understanding of full-scale range and its impact, how to determine instrument accuracy, performing a calibration check, and caring for your instrument. If you have any questions regarding this training module, call 508-946-6200 or visit brookfieldengineering.com. We will gladly answer any questions you may have.